Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts, and in this installment of the MIDI for the Arduino series, we're going to look at building up a MIDI controller. In this video, we're going to connect potentiometers to an Arduino and program it to send MIDI CC commands. Before we start, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters who helped make this video possible. All right, so let's get started. Here's a look at the finished project. To build this, you'll need an Arduino Uno, six 10K potentiometers, make sure they're the linear type, a MIDI jack, two 220 ohm resistors, a 63 pin breadboard and jumper wires. If you can get breadboard friendly potentiometers and MIDI jack, it will make things a little easier for you. If not, you may just have to solder some wires to the components. Visit the link in the video description to visit notesandvolts.com where you can get a full parts list, program download, and more. Now that you're ready, let's plan out how we're gonna build this circuit. First, we'll connect the 10K potentiometer to the Arduino Uno. With the potentiometer facing you, connect the pin on the right to the Arduino's 5 volt socket. Next, connect the pin on the left to the ground pin. Finally, we'll connect the center pin of the potentiometer to the Arduino analog input labeled A0. Now we can build the MIDI out circuit. The parts you'll need are a 5 pin MIDI jack and a pair of 220 ohm resistors. We're going to use pins two, four, and five on the MIDI jack. Here's how they're numbered on the front side and the back side of the jack. Make sure you get these correct. Looking at the MIDI jack from the front, we'll connect the Arduino's TX pin through a resistor to pin five. We'll use the other resistor to connect pin four on the jack to the Arduino's five volt socket. Finally, we'll connect pin two on the jack to an Arduino ground pin. You can use any ground pin on the Arduino board. Now that we have a plan, let's build up the actual circuit. To make room for all the components, I'm going to use a breadboard that's 63 rows wide. First, I'll grab my MIDI jack and place it in the far right hand corner of the board. Next, I'll take two small jumper wires and connect pin 2 on the MIDI jack to the breadboard's ground rail. Now I'll take a 220 ohm resistor and connect it to pin 5 across the center of the board. I'll do the same on pin 4. Finally, I'll connect the resistor on pin 4 to the positive rail on the breadboard. Now we're ready for the 10K potentiometer. I'm going to place the potentiometer on the breadboard starting on row five. Now I'll use a jumper wire to connect the right hand pin of the potentiometer to the positive rail on the breadboard. The left hand pin will connect to the ground rail. Now we'll connect the Arduino. I'll use a jumper wire to connect the Arduino's ground pin to the ground rail on the breadboard. A second wire connects the Arduino's plus five volt pin to the positive rail on the breadboard. Now I'll connect the middle pin of the potentiometer to the Arduino's A0 analog input. And finally, we'll connect pin 5 on the MIDI jack to the TX pin on the Arduino. And to make it look nice, I'm going to add a control knob. Double check your connections and make sure everything looks right. Now that the hardware is complete, let's talk a bit about the software. 
As you turn the potentiometer, it will output a voltage ranging from zero to five volts. The Arduino's analog read command will convert this voltage into a number from 0 to 1023. If you've watched the previous videos in this series, you know that a MIDI command can only have a value of 0 to 127. So how do we convert the Arduino's analog read value into a MIDI friendly number? All we have to do is divide the analog read number by 8. For example, we'll take the highest analog read value of 1023 and divide it by 8. This will give us a value of 127.875. If we ignore the decimal, this will give us a total of 127, which is a valid MIDI number. This seems pretty simple, but there's one little catch you have to be aware of. Ideally, we only want the controller to send MIDI commands when we actually touch the control. When the Arduino reads the voltage of the potentiometer, occasionally it will be between two values. This will cause the number generated by analog read to fluctuate between two numbers. So we'll need to add some error checking to our code to take this into account. To make things easy, I have written some software that will take care of these complicated details. Let's take a look at that now. If you haven't already, you'll need to install the Arduino MIDI library. I'll post a link in the description, or you can simply do a search for Arduino MIDI library. Click the link to the MIDI library GitHub page. At the bottom, you'll see a link to download the latest version. At the time of this video, it's version 4.2. Click the link to download it. Open up the Arduino IDE. I'm using version 1.6.7 for this video. Open the sketch menu and choose include library. Click on add zip library and a file browser will open. Now browse to the location of the downloaded MIDI library file and click open. This will add the MIDI library to your Arduino IDE. To verify this worked, go to sketch include library and you should see MIDI as an option at the bottom of the list. Now we're ready to configure and upload the Arduino software. Visit notesandvolts.com by clicking the link in the description to download the software for this tutorial. Unzip the main folder and remove the MIDI controller software folder by dragging it to your desktop. When you open the folder, you'll see three files. Click on the MIDI controller file to open it up in your Arduino software. This program is designed to be flexible and can be configured for the number of controls used in your project. We're using one potentiometer in this example, so we'll set the number pots variable to one. Next, we'll tell the software how we want our potentiometer to behave. Each potentiometer is its own object and has its own parameter set. We start off by giving the potentiometer a name. I used P01. You could use your own, but for now, I would just leave it at that. Now we get to the first parameter, which is the pin number on the Arduino that the pot is connected to. In this case, it's A0. The next command parameter is for potential future use to allow you to customize the program. For now, we'll leave it at zero. The CC control parameter is the CC number you want the pot to output. I used one in this example. Most keyboards use MIDI CC number one as a modulation wheel command. We can use this to test the controller a bit later. Finally, we come to the channel number parameter, which sets the MIDI channel that the control will output. Make sure the device you're controlling is on the same channel. Now that our object is set, we just need to add it to this array right underneath. 
we simply type an ampersand sign and then the name of the object we just created. Now we're ready to upload the program. Plug in your Arduino's USB cable and make sure the board type and the COM channel is correct. Now simply press the upload button. You'll see the sketch compile and then start uploading. When you see the done uploading message and no error message in the box below, you're good to go. Now I'll connect a MIDI cable from my circuit to my computer's MIDI interface and open my MIDI monitoring software. As I turn the control, you can see the value parameter changing. Also notice that the MIDI CC number is one and the channel number is one, just like we set in the parameters. If you don't have a MIDI interface for your computer, you can use a keyboard to test the circuit. If you think back, we set the MIDI CC message in our program to number one. On most keyboards, CC1 represents the modulation wheel. If we connect our circuit to the MIDI input on your keyboard, moving the potentiometer should have the same effect on the sound as moving the modulation wheel. Make sure your keyboard is set to the correct MIDI channel and that it's configured to accept MIDI messages. Now that we have the circuit working, let's add some more controls. There are six analog inputs on the Arduino, so let's connect five more potentiometers for a total of six controls. The five volt and ground wires are connected to each pot just like the first example. Finally, run a jumper wire from the center pin of each pot to the Arduino's A1 to A5 inputs. Now we'll go back and update the program. Like we did before, let's open the MIDI controller program in the Arduino IDE. Since we now have six potentiometers, we'll change the number pots variable to six. Next, we'll scroll down to the define potentiometer section. I have five more example potentiometers in the code commented out, so to use these, we'll just remove the comment marks. Feel free to leave the parameters as is or change them to your liking. Now we just need to add the new pots to the pot array. Add an ampersand before the pot name as before and make sure you put a comma between each one. Once again, plug in your Arduino and hit the upload button. We'll use our MIDI monitor software again to make sure that each pot is outputting the correct MIDI CC numbers and channels. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You can now use your Arduino as a MIDI controller. Look in your synth manual to discover the MIDI CC messages it responds to. Then go back and change the parameters in the code to customize your controller. In the next episode, we're going to add push buttons to our controller to make it even more functional. So until then, thanks for watching. Now go make some noise.